Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we are sitting down to test out some guilty pleasure makeup. Several weeks ago, I made a trip to Ulta to track down a couple of new items that I was very, very excited about. Now, these are not things that I bought to try and please the masses or things that have been really hyped up for the most part. I guess one of these maybe has gotten a little bit of hype. These are just some makeup products that I, on a personal level, really wanted to try. So we are going to dig into them today along with a couple of old favorites. I hope that you guys are excited about it. If you are new to my channel, welcome. I hope that you you enjoy this one of course if you do be sure to subscribe before you leave and with that let's go ahead and jump right in all right so I've got a goodie bag here of a handful of products from Ulta that I am so excited to try I actually bought these before my full month of nothing new they've been sitting on my floor for four weeks calling to me from the ground so I cannot wait to give them a try today we're also gonna mix in a couple of old favorites as well I did already do my foundation my concealer and my brows for foundation today I am wearing the Milani conceal and perfect foundation in the shade 03 I also have on my Revlon Candid Concealer. In my brows, I have my BH Cosmetics Studio Brow Pencil in the color Blonde. Let's jump into it. We're going to start with the complexion first, and for bronzer, I'm going to use my Too Faced Chocolate Soleil Bronzer in the medium shade. This one I have is quite old. I know they have changed the packaging. I think it's been over a year now, and I am considering picking a new one up from Ulta during the 21 Days of Beauty because this bronzer goes on sale almost every six months at Ulta during their 21 Days of Beauty. And I really do love it. And I really want to try out the new packaging to make sure that the formulas are still the same. But I have so much product left inside here that I just, even though it's getting a little old, it does still work really well for me. So I just don't know that I want to spend my money on the same thing that I already have. Let me know if any of you out there have tried out the new formula and the old formula. If you have done a comparison, let us know if they are the same. All right, that looks amazing. I forget how much I love that bronzer. It is so, so good. For my blush today, I have something new. We are testing out the MAC Glow Play blush. I got it in the shade Grand, which is kind of this like peachy pink. The shade that I most wanted was out of stock in store, but this one looked really pretty as well. So I ended up just going for it and picking up this one. I know so many people have been raving about this blush for a really long time. Jessica Braun absolutely loves it. I'm so curious to see how this compares to the Bare Minerals Bounce and Blur. Feels a little bit more creamy but it's not creamy. It's not a true cream, but it feels smoother and creamer than the Bare Minerals. I don't know. This will be really interesting to play with. Oh, I'm so excited. I feel like this shade is going to match so well with the eye look I'll have going on. My shirt. You guys know I love to match my shirt. So I want to try this with my Luxie Stippling Brush. This is the 516 Duo Fiber Powder. My favorite stippling brush for blush. I'm not quite sure how pigmented this is going to be. I just kind of like to Mostly like tap it in and sort of swirl it a little bit. I could go a little bit more. Oh, there we go. Ooh, that's pretty. It's a very pretty peachy pink. I don't know if I even swatched that for you guys. So here's what it looks like swatched on the hand. Very pretty shade. I would love to know how many of you guys have tried out these blushes. Let me know what shades you love or that you recommend or maybe what shade you're most interested in because this is definitely a blush formula I could see myself picking up more than one shade in. Speaking of blush, I did just order today three more of the Juicy Pang blushes. I got them from Amazon and they didn't have all of the shades that I wanted to try on Amazon. Well, I take that back. They actually did have quite a few shades, but some of them were like $20 a piece, which knowing that I can get them for like eight or $9 on YesStyle, I knew I didn't want to spend 20 bucks on them, but I did find a few for around 10. So I picked up three more shades and they should be here in a couple of days. I cannot wait to try them out. You guys know how much I love that blush. All right, so that is it for the blush. That was really easy easy to apply. Very, very pretty, very natural looking. Just the kind of texture I'm really into right now. Jumping into highlighter, I'm going to go in with my Hollywood Flawless Filter today. I have it in the shade 02. I'm just going to take a little bit of this on the back of my hand. I have this little beauty sponge here. This is from Ulta Beauty. I'm just going to tap into that and then lightly tap that onto the top of my cheekbone. Oh, this stuff is so pretty. Oh my goodness. So expensive, but so, so beautiful. <laughs> I don't often think that really expensive things are like worth their weight in gold, so to speak, but this is one of those products that doesn't seem to annoy me quite as much that I spent the money on this because it just is, I mean, look at that. It's like the most perfect highlight texture. I absolutely love it. 
All right, guys, moving on to the eyes. We are jumping into a new eyeshadow palette that I, and seemingly I alone, am so excited to try. And it is this little palette right here from Ulta Beauty. This is the Gryffindor palette that Ulta Beauty did in collaboration with Harry Potter. I don't know why no one on YouTube is talking about these. I know they've been out for several weeks, but I had a really hard time tracking this thing down. I must get out of the way first. I am a massive Harry Potter fan. I have been for a very, 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 very long time. And I have been waiting for someone to do a Harry Potter collaboration. Now, I will admit this, that I was a little bit disappointed that it was Ulta Beauty that was collaborating with Harry Potter. I was kind of hoping more of a favorite brand of mine would take that on but I also haven't tried out a lot of things from Ulta Beauty and I have not tried out their eyeshadows for a very long time I think I had a single from them about 11 years ago I mean it's been forever but I finally had an Ulta store that had a few things left in stock all they had left were a couple of things in the Gryffindor line and despite the fact that I am a Ravenclaw I'm okay with that because who doesn't love Gryffindor, right? So we're going to be testing out this palette today. I do think it's really pretty. I love these kind of brown berry tones. Oh, I love how these look on the eyes. Now I'm sure I own shades similar to these within my collection, but I'm going to give this one a pass because I am just so excited to have this. It's one I know I will never declutter. So let's jump right into the eye look. We're going to start off with this shade right here in the corner, which is kind of a light beige. I don't know how well this is going to show up on my eyes. It doesn't seem to be too powdery when I load it up on my brush. Okay, it is quite light. This is actually like exactly my skin tone, so I don't know that this is doing anything for me. And one small criticism I already have with this palette is half of the names of the shadows in here are not very Gryffindor. And I feel like that was kind of a large missed opportunity. Like, did the person naming these not even read the books or watch the movies? Plus the shade is definitely not peach, but I don't know. Did I miss something? I'm sure I didn't. I've read the books hundreds of times. Maybe not hundreds. I've read them at least a dozen times, the series all the way through, and I watch the movies more often than I'd like to admit. So if it was up to me, I would name this shade The Burrow instead of Peach, but that's just me. Now with that same brush, my Morphe M504, we're gonna jump into this shade down here, this light pink, which is the shade Mandrake, and I'm gonna dust that just right of above my crease. Ah, I forgot again. I'm gonna zoom you guys in really quick. Hold on. All right, that's a pretty shade. I really like these mattes. They're actually going on pretty easily and quickly. I'm not having to dip back into the pan to build up some good color. And they're really, really soft and blendable, but they're not powdery. Like if you look inside this pan, they're not too soft or powdery, which is not really a deal breaker for me. Some of my favorite more high-end eyeshadows can be a little bit powdery. All right, so I do want to run that shade on my lower lash line as well. I just washed all my rougher brushes, and I do have plans to do a brush video sometime this week, so I don't want to use them today, which is really hard, because going back to my Morphe brush after the rougher brushes, I never once thought this brush was scratchy or hard until I started using the rougher brushes, and now... I notice a big difference. Like it's not, it doesn't irritate my eyes or anything, but it definitely is not as comfortable as my fluffy, soft rougher brushes are. By the way, I'm just taking that same Mandrake shade and running it below the outer lash line right here. This is a really pretty color. It's like a purpley pink. Now to decide how to deepen up the outer corner. There's a lot of really beautiful deep shades in here. We're gonna keep it kind of rosy. I'm gonna go into this shade right here, which is the shade Autumn. And on that same, Real Techniques shading brush. I'm going to just start tapping this kind of along the lash line and up through this outer V area. Actually, let's do that with my Morphe M507. I think it'll work a little bit better. There we go. I know a lot of you like it when I zoom in, but I almost always get comments about my forehead wrinkles when I zoom you guys in really close. So please, I know they're there, be nice. Okay, I'm loving this kind of reddish brown color. It's not too red. Sometimes these kind of reddy browns, when you start to blend them, a lot of that red can kind of turn pink. This one seems to really maintain a good amount of depth, which I really like. So I'm just kind of taking that dark shade in about nine and three quarters of the way. Oh man. I know, I know, so cheesy. I couldn't help myself. I thought of that joke like three weeks ago. Honestly, three weeks ago. All right, that looks so pretty. I really like that. So I'm gonna take that same dark kind of reddy brown shade, the shade Autumn, on that Real Techniques brush, and we're gonna just kind of lightly smudge this just along that very outermost part of the lower lash line. 
All right, and now I want to take a little bit of this color right here, which is the color Howler. How cute is that name, Howler? Yes, I approve of that name. This looks to be a nice kind of red bronze shimmer. We're going to tap that just on the outer half of the lid. And I'm going to wipe off that Real Techniques brush. I'm just going to feather this right along this edge. This will help with the overlapping of the next shade that we go in with. Now I'm going to take the center shade, which is really the only shimmery lid shade in this palette. This is the shade Passion. Here's what it looks like. It's just kind of a light champagne gold. You guys know I love a light champagne gold. I'm just tapping that across the inner half of the lid and kind of overlapping that other shade. Whoops. Pretty good shimmer formula. We'll see how it wears, but it's really nice. It's not super metallic or reflective, but it's more than just a satin. It does have a good amount of reflectiveness to it. And again, taking that Real Techniques brush, I'm just going to dust over this edge right here. Then I'm going to kind of take my finger and press those two shimmers together to kind of get them to meld. All right, and now I'm going to take that same Real Techniques brush and go into this corner shade right here, which is the shade Chocolate Frog. And we're just going to start to build up some depth on this outer corner. Speaking of Harry Potter, I still have yet to pick up the Charlotte Tilbury JK Magic lipstick. I really do want to pick that one up. That would be a totally guilty pleasure kind of lipstick. I don't even know, like if I was just to pick out a Charlotte Tilbury lipstick based on shade, I don't know that that would probably be my first choice, but it does look like a pretty shade and I just, I can't not own that lipstick. Because of its ties to Harry Potter, because of the packaging, honestly the packaging is like, what? draws me to that more than anything. It's very much a collector's kind of item for me. So yeah, I've been really surprised I haven't seen anybody use or talk about this in a YouTube video. That said, I haven't been quite as engaged with watching YouTube videos as often and diligently as I normally do because summer's just so busy for us. So it is possible that maybe I missed people talking about it, but it kind of surprised me because this thing sold out so quickly in stores and online. So clearly a lot of people were interested in this, but I don't know, maybe most of them were, were, were kids and me. Lastly though, before we move into the mascara and finishing off with the eyes and the lips, let's add a little bit of this cream shade right here, which is the shade Pure. Not a bad name for Gryffindor, but come on. Pure, Fox, or Godric's Hollow, or even like Goblin Maid, I don't know. All right guys, so here is the finished eyeshadow. I'm very impressed with how these shadows went on. They went on with no trouble at all. It didn't take me very long to do this look. Love how the colors built up and the depth that we got out of it. And even that inner lid shade is really pretty. We'll see how they wear. I'll keep you guys posted. I'll leave a pinned comment down below letting you guys know how these wore throughout the day. But so far, so good. So I'm going to finish off with the eyes. I'm going to add just a little bit of my Wet n Wild liner. Then a couple coats of my Tony Moly mascara. And then I will be right back and we'll finish off with the lips. All right, so here we are with the finished eyes. Very happy with how this eye look turned out. I think it's really, really pretty. Very impressed with these shadows so far. So we're gonna move into the lips. And for the lips today, I have two new products. Harry Potter lip gloss. I mean, again, I couldn't resist. This one is in the shade Hedwig, which is kind of a clear with a bit of a glitter reflect. Actually reminds me a little bit of the Samantha March lip gloss and Ofra. I'll swatch those side by side when we get to that part. But I also picked up a new lipstick from MAC. This is in the shade Yosh, which I think is such a cute name. Who doesn't love to say Yosh? I mean, let me swatch this one for you guys. It's kind of just a good nude like a pinky brown rose. Very pretty, very me color. This is a matte formula, which I have not tried matte's matte formula yet, so I'm excited to get that one a try. So we're gonna go ahead and start off with the lipstick, and then I'm actually gonna add a little bit of liner after I apply the lipstick, because I wanna see how this looks on its own by itself with nothing else underneath it, just to see what the color is like. Okay, that is really pretty. Very comfortable so far. I love this shade. I feel like it really goes with my cheeks and my shirt. <laughs> but I do want to add a little bit of liner on top. I'm going to take the Milani Color Statement Lip Liner in the shade Spice. I always like to take my clean finger and just kind of 
tap over that lip line just so it's not quite so drawn on looking so it looks a little bit more natural and diffused. Now we're going to go in with the lip gloss. So this is the shade Hedwig. They do actually still have these on the Ulta website. At least the day that I'm filming this they do. It's one of the only makeup items that is left from this Harry Potter line. Which is so unfortunate that this came and went so quick. So I'm going to swatch it for you guys. So there it is right there. I know it's going to be a little hard to see because it's clear. Just a nice clear with a bit of a glitter reflect to it. Let's see how that compares to the Ofra. Samantha March Millie lip gloss. I love this lip gloss so much. I have a feeling this one's going to be a little bit more shimmery. Like it's going to have a little bit more of a shimmer quality to it. Yeah, so it definitely has a lot more shimmer particles in it. I will admit and tell you guys that I did try this out on my way home from Ulta several weeks ago. I mean, it's a nice gloss. I don't think it's the best gloss out there and for 10 bucks even though it is super super cute it has this little gold picture of Hedwig on there. It says Hedwig on it but I still would not pay $10 for this again. I would only pay such atrocious prices for something like this for a Harry Potter themed item. Happy I did, but I'll never do it again. <laughs> so one more thing, I do wanna add just a little bit more blush. Now that I have all my makeup on, I feel like I need just a tiny bit more blush right up there. In fact, I forget that when I use the Charlotte Tilbury, I actually like to usually put this on before I put on my blush, because sometimes I can find that it will kind of overpower or wear off the blush underneath it. Especially if I go a little bit too heavy handed or too widespread with it. So we're just gonna add a little bit more. I'm very curious to see how these blushes last. I feel like the Bare Minerals ones last really well. The Juicy Pang ones last very well, although they're a completely different formula. But curious to see how these last. That will take me some time to figure that out. So I probably won't be able to comment on that in this video, but I definitely will come back and let you guys know my thoughts on the MAC blush. But with that, you guys, that completes today's makeup look, trying out some makeup products that were just guilty pleasures for me. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I know some of these products are not even available anymore. And if you're not a Harry Potter fan, you probably are not very interested in this eyeshadow palette. But but I had so much fun trying this stuff out today. I hope that you guys enjoyed it as well. If you did enjoy today's video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And of course, make sure that you subscribe before you leave if you are not already subscribed. But that is all for today. Thank you guys so much for stopping by. Have a good one and I will see you all in my next video. Bye. You guys want to hear my other names that I came up with? I actually, yes, I am that big of a nerd. I sat down and came up with alternative names to the shadows inside this palette. So really quickly, here they are. You can fast forward 10 seconds if this does not interest you. Fox, like Fox the Phoenix, F-A-W-K-E-S. Nearly Headless, Hagrid, Godric's Hollow, and Lily. Can't you just imagine those names imprinted below these shades? Stop, Mandy. Stop. That would be a great name. Swish and Flick. Oh my gosh. Yes. What would we replace Coco with? Swish and Flick. Come on. Harry Potter fans, name your favorite book and your favorite movie. My favorite movie has got to be number three. Favorite book, six or seven? Six. I'm going to go six. Half Blood Prince. 